school sits across the bridge going up into the hills. You come down this long winding road and you're following along Troublesome Creek. There's something that settles over the school that's very special. It's one of our great gathering places in the mountains where people can come together and learn from one another. That's always been at the heart of the founders' mission and purpose for this school. It's an epicenter for food, culture, agriculture, music, poetry, prose, and it's all turning right inside that school. The Hyman Settlement School is one of the places that has been a wellspring for those traditions to thrive and be incorporated into 21st century Appalachia. The Settlement School is nearing 120 years old, and so we have the chance to continue to speak into the lives of people in this community that have understood the presence of Hyman Settlement School for all this time. I'm going to sing you the story, okay? And when it comes to the chorus, you count with me, okay? One, you'll have sorrow. Two, you'll have joy. Three, get a present. When you look at the history of Hyman Settlement School being the first rural settlement school in the country, it was founded during a time of transition. Their philosophy was to offer education to students who did not have an opportunity at that time to receive an education. Culture is alive, it's always changing, it's always shifting and moving, and so you see that with their programming. Around 40 years ago, our school transitioned to primarily serve students who struggle with dyslexia. Anytime you see an E or an I after C, it's going to say the S sound. Let's keep practicing that. As a parent and a teacher, I felt like I should be able to help him, and I could. He would cry, obviously I would cry. <laughs> it was just a struggle, because you know he was falling behind, and I could see that. What we want to instill in our students is that they can really do anything. We want to cheer for them. We want to encourage them. We want to help them not experience failure as much as possible. Maybe it's just our imagination, Alfred replied. They gave him some skills to learn to cope with his dyslexia. His communication skills were better. He felt more confident. He opened up. He made friends. He just blossomed. When we empower people to do those things, then that comes back to the community in many ways. As Eastern Kentucky as a region, as an economy goes through a big economic transition. Hyman is one of the places that's offering a new vision forward for what that could look like. That's 2014 or 13 and a half. 13 and a half. 13 and a half. The Hyman Settlement School started to get interested in food waste. Food waste is a unique word to describe the types of things that we do here in Hyman with local food and agriculture. There have to be other community connectors that can connect people who need healthy food to the healthy food that's available. And the Heinemann Settlement School Processing and Teaching Kitchen and the farm is really serving that role. It's really true that food is love. When you take the emotional content out of food, you lose that bond to something that you need to survive. That has a big impact on an individual person and on the community that they live in. In order for us to be able to change that conversation with local families, what we have to do is to look at how we look to the land and to figure out how that land sustains us. My great-great-grandfather bought a large tract of land. It's been handed down through the family. Ray Ray, Thaddeus, come on, come on girl. He had acres of strawberries and he had a greenhouse out back for bedding plants and he sold strawberries and bedding plants. Growing bedding plants I had never done in my whole life. Now, I couldn't have kept those puppies alive if I didn't go every other Tuesday to Einman. It's about being self-sustaining. It's about supporting the people that you know and love in your community. It's about supporting your history and your culture and keeping people on the farm. Let's take that legacy and now see how it can completely change the way we think about food in Kentucky. We have the opportunity to sit at a lot of those tables where those conversations are taking place about what does Eastern Kentucky look like next. More than anything, I think what we all have to understand is that we have to reimagine what a future Appalachia looks like. There's not going to be one answer. There are going to be multiple answers. And I think we have to be open to all of them.
that's one of the really important roles that the settlement school is playing in this time is just as that gathering space where people can come together and celebrate what's good about the region, celebrate and evolve those traditions, and dream about what the next 117 years might look like.